Hey everyone, it's Jesse, and earlier this month, I got the chance to play Final Fantasy 16. So, in this preview video, I'm gonna share everything I learned, minus major spoilers, all the thoughts I have on what I played, and more importantly, try to do it with only B-roll, since we weren't allowed to record. But I promise you, I'm gonna try my best. You all right? Never better. So before we even start, let's just cut to the chase. Was it good? Did I like it? Well, for clarity, I only played about six hours of the main game and then a few separate portions that were available, and it was a dev build, so I assume things will change. So let's just make it clear that everything I'm about to say is shrouded in that. But I loved this game loved it. And we'll definitely get into more detail about why that is. However, I have to say, if you're interested in the combat, and it is interesting, but you're not like a big RPG player, give it a shot, but it's an RPG. Well, if you're not cut out to be a shield, there's always work for you in the stables. Unless, of course, you think you can defend your master while sat on your ass in a puddle of pig swill. Especially an RPG made by the minds behind Final Fantasy XIV, a game that is very story heavy. And 16, just like 14, intends to tell you a complex, compelling story, giving characters and moments the right amount of time to marinate. And for someone like me, that is so awesome, it's exactly what I want. But that may not be your vibe because, and my 14 players out there will recognize this, the flow of the first six hours was roughly story, walking while story, story, boss fight, story, exploration, story, dungeon, story, walking while story, story, town and mini quest, story. And so for me, I'm eating up every tasty lore morsel. But I have been playing games my entire life and been in the online gaming space for 20 some years. So I'm very aware that many people don't give a damn about story, they skip all the story scenes, and for you, if you're that type of player, it may not be your jam. But for the rest of us, we're gonna eat good. Because when it comes to narrative, Final Fantasy 16 delivers. Besides the incredible storytelling, the game also doubles down on world building with something called Active Time Lore, or ATL. So imagine something's happening on screen, and at any point in the game, combat, exploration, a cutscene, whatever, and you have a question about what you're looking at, by pressing the touchpad in the middle of your controller, you bring up the ATL, which will present several spheres of information relating to your location, group members, or just interesting facts about both. And some of the more cynical viewers might right now be thinking, is this one of those things where rather than explain it in the story, they just make you read a bunch of stuff? Absolutely not. No. The best way to explain it would be something like this. During one of the scenes, a character is describing how they were brought to a kingdom after their nation was defeated. And you can assume, based on the conversation, that this is one of those will house the enemy king's child to prevent another war kind of things, similar to Theon in Game of Thrones. But if you really must be sure that's the case, you can press the ATL and have it spelled out for you. Speaking of Game of Thrones, if you're looking for a vibe of what the story is without any spoilers, it's basically like if Game of Thrones and Attack on Titan had a baby. I'm not gonna spoil anything by explaining that, but it is the single best way to describe the world this game takes place in. And when you play it, you will completely understand. And no, it's not what you think. But the thing I will talk about with the story, since we're previewing it, is the stuff I could see them setting up. So the first thing, which is made very clear and is done incredibly well with the world design, is that the modern world, this medieval magic world, is built on the ruins of an ancient one. Think something similar to a medieval castle built on ancient Roman ruins. But if those Roman ruins also seemed alien-like, it's super interesting. And in this age, built on top of a previous one, there are various kingdoms and nations all vying for power. And to keep and maintain this power, they use dominance. Those few blessed with the strength of the icons, aka the Final Fantasy summons. And in some nations, dominance are the leaders, and in others, they're slaves. But everyone knows they are dangerous and not to be messed with. And when unleashed on the battlefield, it becomes very obvious why they're considered so. Meanwhile, to up the tension, the world is being corrupted by a mysterious blight, and as the blight corrupts, the fighting over land and resources intensifies. To fight back against this and to power their daily lives, the people use crystals, the hallmark of Final Fantasy games. For example, in this world, a blue crystal can produce drinking water, a red crystal can heat an oven or light a cigar. In one town, a dude was cutting a topiary bush using a green crystal. To wield any type of magic, a crystal is needed. Unless, you're a dominant, whose power, again, was bestowed by an icon, of which there are a total of eight, each with their own champion. 
And so Clive, our main character's adventure, spans years of his life as he navigates a world with an ancient mysterious past, covered in strange crystals with incredible powers, slowly being corrupted by a devastating blight caught up in perpetual war. It's pretty compelling stuff, but also you can understand why something like that would need all the story and cutscene time it could get. But it does it all so well that uh, here's all I'll say. As a lore nerd who can usually see the ending coming from a mile away, I don't know where this story is headed. I couldn't tell you who the big bad is after playing as long as I did, and I love that. So, since I promised no spoilers and we are getting dangerously close to that territory, let's move on from story and talk combat. Because that is something I think a lot of people are curious about. And unlike the active time battles of yesteryear, this game is trying something different. But before we jump into how the game plays or feels, let's talk about the UI for combat because I think that's pretty important to sort of get a general gist of what this is. On the bottom right is your abilities. These include your bigger attacks, special skills granted by the icons. Some have cooldowns and do high damage. Others, like the Phoenix Dash, just let you move around and get closer to the enemy. And as seen in the state of play, you can learn new abilities and skills as you progress through the game. On the bottom left, corresponding with your directional buttons, are the items. For the time that I played, you could only equip three items at a time. So maybe a potion, high potion, and stone skin potion. You could switch between what was actively available to you via your inventory, but your directional pad only allowed three things at a time. Plus, you were limited in quantity. So I could only have, for example, four regular potions and four high potions. Can you get more later on? No clue, that's just what I had. Also in the bottom left is where your Torgal menu appears. Torgal being your faithful hound and the one teammate you can actually control, but you don't have to, and, and we'll get to that in a second. Then in the top left of your screen is the icon that you have currently active. Eventually you can cycle through the icons in combat and change what your abilities and powers are. When it comes to actual gameplay, I'm, I'm having a hard time trying to put it into words. It's got shades of Devil May Cry, Crisis Core, Kingdom Hearts, and a little soulsy? I guess I'll just describe the flow of combat and hope that does it justice. So Clive has normal attacks and magic he can use and special abilities, which you can unleash whenever, but I discovered that while it's all fine and dandy on the lesser random enemies for bosses or for more difficult enemies, it's a little more complicated. On tougher enemies and bigger boss fights, for the most part, your attacks don't really do that much damage. So unleashing all your best attacks isn't that great. What you need to do is trigger their stagger meter. Once staggered, you can unleash hell on them with your abilities and do big damage. The part I discovered and absolutely loved is that if you use your cooldown abilities for one of your icons, but there's still stagger time left, you can switch to another icon's power, use those, and keep doing damage until time runs out. Sure, everything's now on cooldown, but it looks cool as hell. So what's the best way to trigger a stagger? Well, you can slowly chip away at the enemy, which will do a tiny bit of damage and a tiny bit of stagger meter, or you can either parry or dodge into a follow-up attack. The dodge and follow-up being a big winner for me since I absolutely suck at any and all parrying in any game at any point in time. Both do a ton of stagger damage, and if you're really good, you'll see how quickly you can decimate some enemies that seemed pretty hard. Also in combat, there are cinematic clash modes that add a bit more spice to some of the bigger fights. It's not some sort of complicated QTE thing, it's just a button match of some sort. If anything, it's to add a more cinematic feel to some fights or to mark phase shifts between bosses. And while we're talking cinematic, the titanic clashes between the icons are amazing. It's honestly hard to describe them without spoiling it for you, so I'm just not gonna do that. And since I only saw two of them, I can only say so much about the mechanics, but they were unique compared to the rest of the game. I'm talking like different genre unique. Uh, that's all I'll say about that. And if you hear all this and are a bit worried, don't be. The game comes with special items that you can equip that should make your worry vanish, so you can explore the story and just have fun. When you start the game, you're given a choice between story mode and normal mode, and basically the difference is story mode equips all of those items right away and will allow you to play stress-free if you're worrying about your skill or reaction times. As mentioned in the state of play, they're not permanent. You can remove them or change things up as you want as you play, but if you're curious what those items are, are, I wrote down a bunch of them. The Ring of Timely Healing uses a potion automatically if your HP falls too low. The Ring of Timely Strikes takes complex attacks and sort of just makes them all the square button. The Ring of Timely Focus slows down avoidable attacks so it's easier for you to dodge them. And the Ring of Timely Evasion 
which is just an auto evade. Obviously, you can't equip the last two together. It's more like a choose how you want the game to accommodate you. Personally, I felt the slowdown to make attacks easier to dodge kind of broke the flow of combat for me, but I didn't want to auto evade, so I just chose to learn. With that said, however, I did eventually unlock another ring, one that I definitely used, which was the Ring of Timely Assistance. This ring makes Torgal, your dog's abilities, automatic. So he'll use whatever, whenever he can, rather than me having to worry about being optimal and trying to use him at different points, I just let him do it himself and I liked that. And if you're still like, oh man, I don't know if I'm gonna get the hang of this, you're in luck. There are things called aret stones, which can help. It's pretty much like the Crisis Core digital battle world thing, except there are three versions. One is a tutorial mode where you can summon a monster to fight and train on. It straight up does the fighting game thing, where not only can you see what abilities you're using, but also what buttons you're pressing at the same time, so you can practice and get better at it. The next mode is a challenge mode where you have minimum items, gear, stats, basically to take on the challenge and see how well you do. And the last mode is for redoing missions or areas of the game for XP, gear, or missed achievements. If it matters to you at all, I loved the combat. I got the hang of it by the end of the first boss and anything else they added seemed pretty easy to understand and just flowed with the way the game was going. I never really felt intimidated by it. There was one fight, however, that was so spectacular and so over the top that I had to equip the slow down time because I was so busy focusing on what was going on on screen because it was so cinematic that I was just getting beat up. Also, of course, because it's an RPG, the character interactions in combat, in exploration are great. I loved how Clive and Sid played off each other. I thought that was great. Didn't get that much time with Jill, but she's also great. Like, as an example, there's one moment that I found really funny where you're fighting a bunch of wolves and then more wolves show up and Sid's like, this is stupid. I love wolves. And I just, I thought that was great. It made me laugh. Maybe they're friendly like Togo. Or oh, maybe they're not. If you're wondering about the music, I mean, it's soaking. It's gonna be amazing. This song from the trailer, for example, will be stuck in your head long after you play. Revenge is a weapon. And if you enjoy the music as much as I do, just like in Final Fantasy XIV, you can collect orchestrations that you can then play in taverns and pubs in the game. There's a lot pulled from 14 in this game, and as a 14 fan, it's all pluses in my book. I just, I, I cannot stress this enough. I loved this game. I loved what I played of it. I'm really excited for release. I'm racking my brain thinking of what else I can tell you without it just being spoilers, and I don't want to be that guy. So here's what we'll do. In the comments below, hit me with your questions. If I can answer them, I will, and hopefully you'll get some good answers because I, I want to talk about this game so badly, but I'm being good. I'm being good. I cannot wait to jump into this game with you all when the game releases June 22nd.